already. <clears throat> I've tried filming this I don't know how many times. Um, I'm either having mic issues or light issues. And I thought seriously I was not even going to publish this. So, But I told people that I would. So I'm going to. I'm not happy with the quality. Anyway, this video is going to be about funny corners. Um, there are some excellent videos out there on YouTube <clears throat> to try and deal with this. Um, here is a nice example. Um, when I go to stitch my binding down, I do have a video of that. I will show it. I don't know how much you're going to see because my stupid camera wigged out on contrast and there was like over an overdose of light in spots where it shouldn't be so i apologize for that anyway you stitch down and you have this funny angle i know that this is a 60 degree triangle and i know that this is a 60 degree triangle so therefore, the halfway point is this line. And what I do to help me, and you'll see this in the video that I'll show after this, is I stick a pin in this portion, and that pin will tell me when I need to stop stitching. So right there. <clears throat> and then, when I go to fold this back, when I fold it back, you will also see that this edge, the key to this, having it folded right at this angle, because obviously you're not going to know how to fold a 60 degree fold line, you're going to take the binding, if it's not stitched down, and you're going to flop it back. And when you flop it back, this line is going to continue with the binding line. This line right here will continue on with the binding line. And I point that out in the video.
there's no sound in the video. <clears throat> there's way too much noise in my house, and so I have to edit all of the sound out. Now, <clears throat> I chose not to, whenever um, I round this corner, I don't round the corner, first of all. Second of all, if you're going to round the corner, make sure you're using bias binding. This is jelly roll strips, so it does have the stretch of the normal <clears throat> um, selvage to selvage uh, stretch it's going to have. This is usually how I make binding, but I recommend if you've never done this before or if you're going to machine quilt this down completely <clears throat> to go ahead and use bias binding whenever you do a funny angle because it's very, very forgiving. Um, <clears throat> when you turn this about, here I am, um, there are some videos out there that you stitch over it, and I found that when I tried to, kind of like when you make, you fold your mitered corner for your 90 degree, um, and then after you fold it back, then you fold it on top, and it squares it off at the edge, and then you just stitch over it. I tried to do that with this, and it just didn't work out right, and I think it's just my inexperience. So I chose not to stitch on that corner where I, I had this back. I, I chose not to do that, but that's probably the right way to do it. And it, when you're doing your quilt, if you're not sure what you're doing and you've never done this before, I recommend sewing two or three inches here, folding it right, stitching it down about two or three inches here, then bringing it to the back to see if it's going to make the right corner. Because if it's not, and you've stitched your whole binding around your whole quilt, um, you're going to have a lot of ripping to do. And so my first three corners on this quilt, um, I took them one at a time. Each one was not right. And I'm glad I took that step. So that's my advice to you. Um, I also recommend using a walking foot. Um, <clears throat> those of you who have vintage machines, you can get away with just adjusting your pressure foot gauge. Um, that's a whole other uh, video. I need, I need to do a video on that because how many of you will stitch two pieces of fabric together and then when you get done, there's n you've stitched a perfectly straight line, but when you bring it up, it's curved. I mean, it's curved bad. And they, they tell you when you do the jelly roll race to every time you stitch a straight line to either go up or go down, never ever continually go down because your quilt will slowly kind of warp. Um, that's because your sewing machine set wrong. It's an easy adjustment on a vintage machine. It's just a screw adjustment at the very, very top of the machine. If you are running a new digital machine, there is usually a setting for it. You'll have to read in your manual. I have got a Janome, and my Janome, um, there is a pressure foot gauge. It has setting one, two, and three on the knob. I usually run that at the lightest setting. And another example of this, so the mechanics of a sewing machine and how it works, your bottom feed dogs and your top a uh, hopping foot go at different rates. So how how do you know if you have it set right? Well, let's say you're garment sewing or or quilting, doesn't matter. And you line up your edges and you pin your edges and it does not you you stitch it and then for whatever reason it does not it scoots. So you're you're fabric's going to scoot this way 
And so if I'm, I'm, this is my, my top fabric and this is my bottom fabric and I'm running it through my machine, this is going to scoot. That's how you know if you have your machine set wrong. Whatever works for you. <clears throat> but enough about the sewing machine lesson. I do need to do a video on that. That's probably a good idea. Anyway, treat these corners. You should have a mitered corner. Um, if you don't end up with a mitered corner, then you probably need to rip this out and try again. And there's no harm in using your seam ripper. I also recommend that if you're just practicing this to uh, make your stitch length a little longer so until you get it right so that you don't have to be too aggressive with ripping out your stitches. You have less stitches to rip out. I mean, it's only four inches. Come on. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Put big girl pants on and just do what works for you. <laughs> um, so here I have rounded this corner. There is a little bit of a tuck. And there's a, just a tad of a tuck. And I don't think my, my camera's going to show this. It's really dark in here. I'm trying to be quiet because the children are in the other room. And they're loud. Um, let's see. What have I not covered? Continuous bias binding. There's great videos out there on how to do that. You know, the longer I've been in this hobby, the more things I realize. When Jenny Doan put out her continuous bias binding, that was a phenomenal video. I mean, if you don't know quilting and you don't know what you're doing and you see that video, it's totally amazing. Well, I hate to deflate everyone's bubble, but it was nothing new. Uh, I have my grandmother's book of sewing, and that book was made in sometime in the 50s. It could have been the 40s, I don't know, but I think it's from the 50s. And in that book, it exactly describes how to make continuous bias binding. Just like all the videos on YouTube tell you how to do it. So nothing's really new. It's just reinvented um, in the social aspect of things via the video. So um, I also recommend that if you're working out funny angles for the first time. We all like to try and machine stitch down our binding. I recommend a walking foot. That's first of all. If you have a vintage machine, you can get away without using a walking foot. I did not use a walking foot on this and I have no problems. But I've been sewing on the machine. I know the machine. Those of you that are newer to that, you might want to just go ahead out of precaution and use your walking foot and that will keep everything unstretched. I mean, I, I know from sewing for years that things don't go together right. You stretch them and you fudge them and you make them work. It's, it's not necessary. As long as you have the right tools, it, you can get the job done. Um, I also recommend that this, because of these funny angles involved, it might be better for you to hand finish this edge, which that's what I'm doing here. Got my needle stuck in right there. Um, by hand finishing the edge, you are in total control. Total control. So, until you get a knot. Jeez. Um, it's, it's amazing how long this does take. I find that if I watch So Yeah or Mom Pop Quilt Shop or whatever, and I just sit at the table and I'm listening while I'm binding and I hand stitch this, I, I can have this done in a day by hand stitching. I'm going to give you more advice. If you go to push your needle through and there's any type of drag on your needle, get rid of the needle. It means it's old. It means 
I was using an old pack of needles that come in my old vintage sewing machine cabinet and I didn't have needles just hand sewing needles so I was using them and I just it's like this is so labor intensive and then for whatever reason I think this is what happened my my needle I always when I when I get done sewing something my needle always goes in my pin cushion with the, the thread remnant tail um, so that I can find it the next time because um, you can lose your needle in your pincushion. Well, I think the children actually pushed my needle down into my pincushion because my my needle turned up missing. So I didn't have any more needles or I couldn't find the vintage pack of needles I had. So I had to go buy needles. And then I used a new needle and I was like, oh my goodness, this glides in so much easier. That other sharp, the reason why they're called sharps is because they dull. That's why the little tomato comes with the little emery, um, oh, what is that thing called? The emery strawberry, so you can sharpen your sharps. I don't know how old that needle was, but um, that pack of needles, when I did come across it again, I went ahead and threw them away. They were too old. They were not gliding through my fabric. Make it easier for yourself. I am a person that does not like thimbles, but here I am. I'm wearing one. See? This is plastic. Um, I can't wear it. I, I don't use this finger to push. I find that in a natural stitch of things, I grab with my thumb and my finger, and I push with this finger, and usually I'm pushing on the edge. It's a natural motion for me. If, you're, if you put your thimble on and there's pain, you don't have the right thimble. They come in all different uh, medias. They come in leather, they come in silicone, they come in plastic, metal. They come with different tips. I've even seen little round discs that you tape to your finger. Whatever works for you. Now, I will say that for years I would hand stitch and I didn't have a thimble and then my hand, my finger would be tender to the touch wherever I was puncturing that and um, I got wise <laughs> and because the way my finger is it's really really kind of wide at the top so I found that this open thimble actually works best for me. You can get real fancy silver ones made of silver that cost an arm and a leg. This one I think is made by Clover. It was in my price range. If I were to lose this thimble, I would cry, even though it was probably only $7. Because this thimble fits me no matter what I'm doing, no matter what finger I put it on, it always fits. So your tools you're going to need for this are a nice new sharp, a thimble, and and stitch away. It's very, very relaxing. Some people despise this part of it, but I find that there is like a let down for me. When I get done with a quilt, I am so excited that it's done. And then I move on to the binding and it's all coming together and it's an exciting time. And then when I'm done, I'm a little bit sad because it's kind of a letdown because you've looked forward to this moment for such a long time and then it's just over with. And the thrill is gone. And then you have to move on to another thrill. So um, this binding helps me think about what's going to take place next. Um, I think this is, a this fabric is basic gray by Moda. I don't know. I've got the other jelly roll. I don't know. The backing is Robert Kaufman, and I don't remember what that's called. And then I think this is just muslin, a bolt, rock, rock something muslin. I don't remember. It's made for dyeing. Anyway, um. I'm using Aurifil thread to stretch this or to stitch this down, and 
This is the first time I've actually used Aurifil for binding. And I must say that it doesn't knot up like Coates and Clark. Sorry, Coates and Clark, your thread knots horribly. I can pass it through maybe the needle through four times and then I'm constantly fighting knots. And that's really frustrating when you're wanting a nice finished edge and all of a sudden you've got this loop-de-loop -loop knot sticking out. Um, it, this was a thread in one of my Open Gates quilts boxes that I thought, oh, I'll never use that. That, that thread matches nothing. And guess what? It matches perfect. Um, so good quality thread. I know some people use beeswax to wax their thread. You can certainly do that. Um, good quality sharp, good quality thimble. Practice making your, uh, your funny angles. Um, since this is a 60 degree and this is a 60 degree Actually, that one's not a 60 degree. This one's a 90 and a 60. So 60 plus 90 is 130 degree. Uh-uh. Um, doors closed. Go away. Sorry. Um, I do want to talk about one more thing that's a little bit exciting for me. Um, Today I took training to be a county fair judge. I'd never ever heard of that. Obviously somebody has to judge them and I always wondered who did it. And I, I don't know the year. I think I made the quilt back in 2006. It was a drunkard's path quilt. And I made it out of my grandpa's handkerchiefs and my grandma's fabric. And it was a my memory quilt. And it turned out beautiful. Was it perfect? No. But it had so much sentimental value, I couldn't see past the imperfection. I entered it into our county fair. I was up against one other quilt. That quilt had hand embroidered sign language on each block for the alphabet. Um, the person that made the quilt also had a long arming business so they were probably a master craftsman at it whereas that 2006 quilt might have been my third quilt that i ever made and it was a difficult pattern the drunkard's path is not easy and i felt so jaded when i walked out of there with a best of show even though there was only two quilts so i didn't even get a second place <laughs> And it always bothered me because I never got a critique of what I did wrong. Well, today I took the training and now I know what I did wrong. And I need to get that quilt out of the cedar chest. And I need to show that to y'all. And I need to critique it now. With, You know, that's been a while ago. I don't hardly ever use the quilt anymore. My emotional attachment was probably way stronger then than it is now. because. I mean, I was new in quilting, and it was my masterpiece, and I've made I don't know how many masterpieces, and it's not a masterpiece by any means. So I think I need to have a video on that. But I learned what they look for. So I will be a judge for photography, which that was very interesting, a judge for painting, or quilting and then the textile arts of crochet or rug hooking or whatever else somebody makes with fiber art, you know, that's the catch-all. Um, I'm very excited about that. I will be on a list to rotate through uh, our system here in Texas where you get called um, to go judge stuff like that at a fair. And plus, that'll get me out of the house. I'll get to see beautiful quilts. I'll be able to take pictures of them. I'll be able to touch them. I'll be able to examine them. I'll be able to really give it a good go over. And I think that will actually help me be a better quilter. Um, 
for those of you that are interested in that, I'm pretty sure your state probably offers something like that. I know that when I did that quilt in the county fair, I never got a critique with mine, so I kind of always was bothered that I was up against a master quilter and they won, and it was never explained to me why they won. Well, they had handwork in theirs, so anytime you make a quilt, everybody, the judges realize how much time you, and effort you put into it. So because of the handwork in the quilt where she hand stitched all the hand symbols for the sign language, that was probably what won her prize because of the work. Her quality was probably okay. Her quilting probably sucked. She's quilted some of mine and I've had to get them requilted. She's not that great of a quilter um, as far as long arming. And that's one reason why I did get a long arm is because I wanted to I wanted to get outside the I was um stymied. So all the people around here they would do pantographs, but she wouldn't even do that. She would just do a meandering. And I'm sorry. That's just you can have a beautiful quilt and if you meander on it, it's it's not that great. I mean, to think of all the designs you could do, and she just meanders, so okay, whatever. But, anyway, I now am no longer jaded, and I realize my mistakes, and I need to get out my quilt, and I need to teach you what judges look for if you are entering in a fa into a fair. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be put on a roster for state fair. That's a little intimidating. <laughs> But I know I'll have great specimens to gaze upon. So, anyway, I, uh, I appreciate you supporting my channel. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And hit that like, thumbs up button. Um, that just means the world to me. And if you so wish, leave me a comment. And I will try and get back to you just as soon as I can. Um, we all can learn as we go, and if we don't know what we're doing, we can admit we don't know what we're doing. There are outtakes that I'm going to show you in this video where I didn't know what I was doing. It's okay. It's okay. We all make mistakes. That's why we have our seam rippers. We all are human. We all can fix it. Quilting is fixable. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.